Welcome back class. I hope you're excited to learn more about mythology before you start reading examples because I'm really excited to tell you more about them. As you probably know, mythology is one of the earliest kinds of literature. People started making myths thousands of years BCE or BC. Now you might be wondering what I mean by that. In history, everything before the birth of Jesus is referred to as BCE or before the common era. You might also refer to it as BC or before Christ, but BCE somewhat respects the many people with different religious leaves better. Everything after the birth of Jesus, including the time that we live in right now, is known as CE or the common era. It's called that because so many cultures count that year as year zero even though humans had been around for millennia at that point. You might also call this period AD or Anno Domini, Latin for in the year of our Lord. But in this class, we'll use CE to acknowledge the many people, including your classmates, who don't count time from that year forward. For example, most of the year 2020 on the American calendar was the year 4718 on the Chinese calendar. Anyway, back to myths. These are usually stories told to help early peoples understand how the world works and how it got the way it is. Myths can explain why bad things happen, like mosquitoes, or why good things exist. And of course, it can also just talk about things that are in between. For example, many cultures have myths about how human beings got a hold of fire Myths often give supernatural or mystical explanations for natural phenomena. Some call it magic, some don't. Remember that most myths were created well before the invention of microscopes, telescopes, or even written language. So don't be too hard on early humans trying to comprehend the moon's phases or the changing seasons. Also try not to be offended if a story that you believe in is included in this unit. Myth does not necessarily mean not true. All of these stories are a matter of belief because whatever events they describe would have happened too long ago for anyone to prove or disprove. Mythology comes from the Greek word mythos, which just means story. And a story is just a sequence of related events that all come together to create some resolution or revelation. In mythology, that resolution is usually a beginning, how something started. And that's always difficult to prove. In that way, myths are unique compared to other kinds of stories, which focus on how things end. Myths are more like prequels, showing how we got where we are, not what comes next. Now, many people think of Greece when they hear the word mythology, but all cultures have myths and myths have been created in many forms. In fact, most myths were not written down until they had been passed around orally for years. Others were depicted in visual form like Australian Aboriginal tree and cave drawings that depict the dreaming or the time before the earth was created. Most myths were not written by a single author either. Instead, most were composed orally and changed over thousands of years, like in a long game of telephone, where each person hears and tells the story just a bit differently. In that way, the author of a myth can be considered a whole society spread out over a large amount of time. So as you read and study the myths in this unit, consider the similarities and the differences between them. What does each one tell us about the society that created it? What do they all come together to tell us about ancient humans in general? <laughs> 